Hello children, welcome back to English class. In this session, we are going to see a short and an interesting story from Unit 4 Supplementary Reader. The title is With the Photographer and it was written by Stephen Leacock. First, we'll see about the author. Stephen P. H. Butler Leacock was born on 30th December 1869. He was a Canadian teacher, political scientist, writer and humorist. He was educated at Upper Canada College in Toronto and the University of Toronto from which he graduated in 1891. He received a fellowship in political economy and took his PhD in 1903. Between the years 1915 and 1925, he was the best known English speaking humorist in the world. He is known for his light humor along with criticism of people's follies. Sunshine sketches of a little town, Orcadian adventures with the idle rich, economic prosperity in the British Empire. The dawn of Canadian history moonbeams from the larger lunacy. The unsolved riddle of social justice. My discovery of England. Wet, wit and dry humour are some of his brilliant writings. And he died on 14th November 1944. Photographs capture memorable moments, right? Yes, they fill us with nostalgia. Nostalgia means a bittersweet earning for the things of the past. So, the photographs may bring us the childhood or younger years or a sweet memories of our past, right? Yes. Okay, what are the occasions when photographs are taken? Yes, you are absolutely correct. Birthday parties, weddings, convocation, functions, annual day, sports meet, inaugural functions, tours, cultural programs, etc. Right? Yes. Okay. What are photographs taken? To freeze our favorite moments, to cherish memorable moments, to record best things, to show to others, to get the past experience, to freeze beauty, to document functions and to lodge complaints with evidence. Isn't it? Yes. So, for all these purpose, photographs are taken, right? Yes. Here we have a short story with the photographer. This story presents an amusing account of Stephen Leacock's encounter with the photographer. In this story, Leacock shows a special brand of biting humor. Let's see the gist of the story. One day, the author goes to a studio to have his photograph taken. The photographer disapproves of the author's face and features. He says that the author's head, eyes, ears, mouth and other limbs are not proper. He makes the author twist and turn his face and body to capture right features. When the author shows his anger at his ill treatment, the photographer finally captures the photo. The author goes back to the studio to see his photograph. He is shocked to see that all his features are changed in the photo. The photographer changes the eyes, removes the eyebrows and adjusts the mouth and ears. He is even ready to remove the ears entirely with the latest technique. The author becomes furious. The author wants a photograph very much like himself 
which his friends can preserve after his death. But the photograph does not reflect his face at all. So he throws the photograph at the face of the photographer and leaves the studio with tears in his eyes. Let's watch and enjoy the short movie of With the Photographer. How can I help you, young man? Oh, yes. I want my photograph taken. Of course. Who on earth comes to photo studio to fit their dentures? Sit there and wait. Come in. Well, I'm gonna get my photograph. Well, I'm gonna get my photograph, and I'm gonna look so good. Sit and down. I'm gonna look so good. And I'm gonna gonna. Look at Don't move! I thought you were finishing up your prayer there. That's not funny. Taking a photograph requires much skill and creativity. Allow me to show some. Maybe I should smile or maybe not. Maybe I should smile or maybe not. Cause I'm gonna look so good. Cause I'm gonna look so good. The face is quite wrong. I know it, and I always know it. I think the face would be better three quarters full. I'm sure it would, and so would yours. Though the face is small, narrow, or solid, it looks good when you frame it to three quarters. I still don't like the head. Open the mouth a little. No, no, close a little. The ears are bad. Droop them a little more. Now the eyes. Lower your chin. Look up with your eyes, extend your jaw, now smile a little. That's better. Now expand your lungs, contract the waist, twist the hip up, now twist your elbow. I tried my best, but the face still looks a little weird. Stop! This face is my face. It's not yours. It's mine. I've lived with it for 40 years. I know it's a bit out of drawing. I know it's not made for me, but still, it's my face, the only one I have. 
I have learned to love it. And this mouth is mine, not yours. These ears are mine. And if your machine is too narrow... I think I cut the features just at a perfect time. So? Features, huh? Can I see the picture? No, I have to develop the negative first. Uh, come back on Saturday. I will show you the proof of my art. Saturday. Okay. I will see you then. Here it is. Is it me? Yes, it is you. The eyes don't look pretty much like mine. I, I retouched them. It looks splendid, doesn't it? Okay, but the eyebrows, I'm sure my eyebrows don't look like that. Eyebrows are removed. We have a, we have a process called the Delphite. If you can notice here, the hair was removed. And not many photo studios have this facility. But why? I don't like the hair low on the skull. Oh, you don't, don't you? No, I don't care. I like to get the hair off and make a new brow line. What about the mouth? Is the mouth mine? I adjusted a little. Yours is too low and found I couldn't use it. The ears, though, strike me as a good likeness. They're just like mine. Yes, that's so, but I can fix them right on the print. We have a process called the sulfide. I will try my best if I can do that for you. Listen, I came here for a photograph, a picture, something which could have looked like me, though it's bad. I wanted something which depicts my face as likely as heaven gave it to me. I wanted something that my friends could keep after my death to reconcile them to my loss. It seems I was mistaken. Go on then, with your brutal work. Take your negative, whatever you call it, dip it in bromide, sulfide, oxide, cowhide, whatever you like. Remove the eyes, retouch the lips, reanimate the necktie, reconstruct the waistcoat, recoat it with an inch of gloss, blur it, emboss it, gild it, do anything you like till even you acknowledge that it is finished. And when you've done all that, you can keep it for you and your friends, or frame it and hang it on your studio as proof of your art. To me, it's a worthless piece of bomb. Okay children, hope you have enjoyed the movie. Let's see few glossaries from the story. Drooping, bending, unwarrantable, illegal or wrongful, pursuits, quest, frantic, mad or desperate, grave, serious, boundless, limitless, seized, Stopped, trifle, bit, staggering, shaking or vibrating, animation, excitement, withering, scorn, disapproving, hated, depict, show or give a picture of, reconcile, to comfort and heal, 
emboss cause to bulge out babble a thing of no value superficies surface or outer face now we'll see few key points for better understanding once the author wanted to take his photo so he went to the studio he was called by the photographer after an hour the photographer criticized the physical features of the narrator he did not like the author's face the narrator refuses the charges leveled against his feature suddenly the photograph was taken the photographer caught the features of animation on saturday he went to see the proof the proof was not as his real face the photographer boosted off his technical skills the narrator shouted at him and asked him to keep the photo with him he wanted a real one to be kept by his friends after his death okay children up to this the story gets over hope you understood don't forget to do all your assignments thank you